KMIZ Sports Director Andrew Kaufman talking some Mizzou brought to you by ITAP, International Tap House. Andrew, how you doing? Doing great. Great to be on with you, Charlie. It is. Every Thursday, love having you on. So let's start with uh, last week, Mizzou versus SEMO. I don't know really what you're supposed to draw from a from a game against SEMO. You win 59-28. In a way, I, I was actually more interested and excited to see some of the backup quarterbacks go out there and play, Brady Cook and Tyler Macon. So so give us your uh, your big takeaways from that win for the Tigers, Andrew. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to take away too much, but uh, you, you can't take away the fact that they got 77 players uh, in the game. Uh, Coach Rick would say that's the first time he's ever done that. That's That seems like a lot of players. So uh, they had 12 different guys catch passes. They had seven different guys run the ball. So they definitely spread it around. Everyone got to, to get in the game. You mentioned Tyler Macon and Brady Cook. Brady Cook leading the Tigers on a, on a scoring drive right to start the second half. And then Tyler Macon getting a lot of playing time. And his first collegiate pass was a uh, – a 65-yard touchdown to J.J. Hester, so that was uh, that was pretty cool to see and uh, perhaps uh, something uh, that Mizzou fans will, will see a lot more of uh, perhaps at the at the end of Tyler Macon's career. So uh, I think that had a lot of Mizzou fans excited to see those those two guys get in the game. But in the first half, Mizzou absolutely dominated. Uh, they were up 38 to nothing at halftime. They scored on every single first-half possession, uh, and they had one field goal, but the rest touchdowns. So, uh, you know, Mizzou took care of business in the first half, which is exactly what you want to see. Connor Basilak throwing three touchdowns. Tyler Beatty continued his terror on college football this year. He had three touchdowns as well, two on the ground, uh, one receiving as well. So uh, everything I think you wanted to see in the first half, you saw from the offensive side of the ball. And then on the defensive side of the ball, it's SEMO, so you know, same thing we said about the offense, but they did hold SEMO to, I believe it was 65, 60-something, or maybe it was 56 yards rushing. So it was, you know, the rushing defense seemed to, you know, step up. SEMO was 0 for 5 on third down. They didn't see past midfield until uh, late in the second half. So the Tigers got the job done. The rush defense looked solid in the first half. The second half was a completely different story, but Coach Trink was after the game. He you know, he said he wasn't worried about it all because you got a lot of new faces in there, a lot of true freshmen in there. He said they were, be- they would have been better off playing Semo's defense uh, than Mizzou's defense, just because <laughs> those guys that were in the game in the second half, they were running the scout team. So uh, take it for what what you will, but but you know, Steve Wilkes, defense coordinator, did say he was concerned about the second half because those are some guys, those second, third stringers, that uh, they're going to see some playing time uh, at the end of the year. That's for sure. Missouri betters were also concerned with that uh, second half. We all know. Now, Ooh, maybe, maybe. I was, I was thinking about those guys. Thank you. <laughs> this may be an unfair question, and it's more for the future, but I do think it's interesting because Connor Bazelak, I don't think he's going anywhere, at least for the next couple years. And I believe the assumption is just because he was more highly touted coming out of high school in East St. Louis is that Tyler Macon eventually will be the starting quarterback. And I know it's very early, but do you feel like Brady Cook will have something? to say about that uh, question? Yeah, absolutely. And I remember watching Brady Cook in high school. uh, His deep ball is is really special. I mean, the way he throws that spiral, I mean, there's not many guys that can throw a deep ball like Brady Cook, especially in high school. We haven't got to see as much in college yet, but I'm sure we will. Uh, That's going to be an interesting battle. Right now, Brady Cook is the number two, uh, but he's also, you know, a year older than Tyler. So uh, that will be something, you know, for the future, uh, and I know Mizzou's also got a, a four-star quarterback coming in from uh, for next year as well. That uh, he's going to have something to say about it as well. So th- there's definitely a ton of talent at quarterback at Mizzou, uh, which has kind of been the trend at Mizzou over the last uh, decade or so. So uh, it, it's it'll be an interesting competition. But right now, Connor Bazelak, he's the guy, and you know he's impressed me a lot. So I'm I'm not sure. You know he'll be here this year. I think he'll be here next year. But then. Depending on how he progresses, it, it will be interesting to see how that goes. We're talking with Andrew Kaufman, sports director at KMIZ TV in Columbia, brought to you by ITAP, International Tap House. A couple other local guys, some uh, some wide receivers. You got Dominic Lovett from East St. Louis. You got Mookie Cooper uh, here in St. Louis. And Lovett goes uh, four catches for 79 yards, Cooper four for 64. And I know it's at, it's mostly at the end of the game there and. You're playing SEMO. Could you see, though, as as we progress more and more into SEC play, you got Boston College this week, but those guys' roles potentially getting bigger as the season goes on? Yeah, it, it was by far the, their most productive game to, together, I thought. 
And they did play a lot, you know, in the first half. Like, those guys are, are going to be out there with the team. I don't think they played as much in the second. So, uh, uh, but Coach Trink was like what he saw from those two guys. And uh, Connor Bazelak had, you know, a good point that Mookie Cooper was out a lot of fall camp. You know, he's a new guy coming in, uh, you know, a transfer from Ohio State. And then he was out during most of fall camp due to injuries. So they haven't quite been able to get that connection that, that he would have liked to have. Uh, this early in the season, but I think as they progress through the season, they'll get more and more comfortable with each other, especially on some of those deep balls. We we saw it against Kentucky. They could have connected on that deep ball right at the end. They couldn't. Perhaps that would have changed the end result, but uh, I would expect to see more and more out of those guys. We saw the deep ball connect with, with Cooper and, uh, you know, in, in the end of the first quarter and uh, against Simo with Connor Bazelak and Mookie, and I think that had a lot of Mizzou fans uh, really excited. So he, the, both those guys got blazing speed. Uh, they're both really talented. And uh, Dominic Lovett, we got a chance to talk to him this past week. He said, you know, the offense, we just getting started seeing what these guys can, can do. So uh, they're, I think they're going to start opening up the playbook a little bit more, and perhaps that'll that'll start this week. All right, so you have Boston College coming up here on the road, an 11 a.m. kick, 2-1. and one, Mizzou, Boston College is, is undefeated. I'm going to be honest with our audience i don't know much at all about boston college i'm sure this week all the guys the coaches have been talking about boston college so andrew kaufman from kmiz tv what do you know about boston college what have the coaches and players been talking about in terms of of how this game will play out and what mizzou needs to do to get the win and the tigers are a one and a half point favorites here on the road yeah and, and they're one and a half point favorites because boston college has a backup quarterback in the starting quarterback got hurt a couple of weeks ago. So you got Dennis Grossell. He's a redshirt senior, fifth-year guy, so he's got a ton of experience. He actually set the record uh, for most passing yards in Boston College history last year against Virginia with 520 yards. But I want to say that might be more of a fluke because uh, if you look at his stats the last couple of games, he only threw for 59 yards last week against my dad's alma mater, Temple. Uh, Temple, uh, <laughs> not so great in football. Uh, they, they were for a little bit, but uh, not so much anymore. Uh, so they got this this fifth year quarterback who's got experience, but the the reason Boston College has success is their run game, which should you know maybe have Mizzou fans a little little scared. They're 31st in, in the nation in rushing offense. They rush for about 200 yards per game. Uh, Mizzou still dead last in Power Five. They give up about 267 yards per game. Albeit a lot of those rushing yards against Simo came in the second half. Uh, like I said, the first half was pretty good, but. You know, Boston College is probably going to do exactly what Kentucky did. They're just going to run it down Mizzou's throats, and it's really going to come down to whether or not Mizzou has learned their lesson, which, you know, talking to the team, talking to Coach Wilkes, talking to, you know, we we spoke with Mizzou safety Martez Manuel this week, and and he said that he just wants to shut everybody up. He wants to shut guys (laughs) like me up, saying that, you know, Mizzou is having trouble stopping the run. And, you know, I hope he does. I hope he does, and I hope they figure things out. They, They say when they watch the film, easy fixes so i hope they're right i hope they are able to to fix it because uh coach shrink would say you know it's not it's not going to be a surprise what they're going to do they're going to they're going to try to run the ball and uh they're you know we'll see if they're successful they're going to win the game but if mizzou can can hold them back a little bit i think you know mizzou's got got a great chance to to get a road win against a a backup quarterback but it's no slouch you know the 3-0 boston college uh you know I've heard from their fans in my in my DMs the last couple of days, so I know they got a passionate fan base. That's for sure. Yeah, that's where it's more fun also to talk about a game. Hopefully, a Mizzou win after they play a, a nice, solid non-conference Power Five opponent. You can't draw too much, even though it was a nice win over Semo. So we'll have some interesting conversation next week. I'm also I'm also wondering just SEC as a whole here three weeks in. Any takeaways from you? You know, you look at the East, and, and Georgia looks really good. Kentucky's up there. Obviously, Florida played a really, clu- uh, a really close game against Alabama and lost, but but took them to the brink there. So, and any major takeaways from what you've watched outside of Mizzou in the SEC so far this season? Well, the fact that, you know, Florida came so close to beating Alabama, I think, was definitely kind of eye-opening, although it is right at the beginning of the year. Uh, and I think Alabama is still by far the, the best team. And I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's just a matter of time before they, they, they win the SEC, you know, championship and they'll be back in the, in the national championship game. It's just, you know, they're, they're so much better than, than everybody else. But, uh, Georgia's really good. Uh, but, you know, when you got, you got Florida, Georgia in the SEC East, 
I think obviously Kentucky beat Mizzou, but after that, I think Mizzou probably is the fourth best team. I would say, I think that Tennessee game next week is going to be really interesting. Uh, I know a lot of Mizzou fans might not be so happy with the 11 a.m. kickoff, but uh, it, it should be a, I think a pretty evenly matched game. It'll be fun to see Josh Heupel back, uh, back in Columbia. Andrew Kaufman, KMIZ TV, here on the Charlie Marlowe Show on 590 The Fan and 590TheFan.com, brought to you by International Tap House, ITAP. I wanted to get a couple basketball questions with you as well, especially because we saw on Twitter that it is Conzo Martin's 50th birthday today. So happy birthday, Conzo Martin. When I saw that, I was just kind of wondering, as you're there, we're, uh, we're several years into to Conzo's tenure at Mizzou. Where do you think he sits with the program and his future in terms of, of folks at Mizzou and a new athletic director in terms of how Conzo has performed so far? Well, he's got a great relationship with the athletic director. They're, they're close family friends, so that is important to note. Uh, so I, I think Conzo, uh, you know, it, it's, it will be very interesting to see what happens this season. Uh, it, it's a bunch of new players on the team that, you know, not a lot of us know. Like, what is Amari Davis, the transfer from Green Bay, going to look like? What's Jerron Coleman going to look like, the transfer from Ball State? Uh, what's De- Deshaun Gordon, the, the transfer from Kansas State? What's what's he going to look like? Uh, these are questions that we can't quite answer yet. We know that Javon Pickett will, is a senior leader on this team. We know that Kobe Brown's probably the, the best player on the team this year. <laughs> Uh, we haven't seen Sean Duru Golden play at all. He's a, the, the retro freshman that sat on the bench last year because he wasn't allowed to play. Um, but he'll be in this year. He's a six seven forward. So they've got these pieces this year that, you know, if I had to guess, I think it's going to be tough for them to make the NCAA tournament. But I could be completely wrong because perhaps some of these transfers are, are really going to, you know, step up and, and be really good. Uh, but, you know, he just got Aiden Shaw as a recruit out of Kansas City last week or the Kansas City area I should say and uh so that's a four star that's the best recruit he's gotten since Jeremiah Tillman since the Porter brothers so you know at least he can say hey if our year's not this good this year we at least have this big recruit coming in next year uh but he's he's definitely you know he needs to get Mizzou back to the NCAA tournament and and for Mizzou fans I think they want to see not just make the NCAA tournament but this is a team that I think fans would like to see consistently make the NCAA tournament and, and perhaps even compete to get to the Sweet 16 Elite Eight year after year because there's enough talent around here that uh, that should be the case. So it'll be an interesting year for, for Coach Martin. I'm, I'm curious to see how this team kind of comes together. A lot of a lot of up in the air, so it's hard to it's hard to answer exactly how, how good they're going to be. Yeah, you mentioned Aiden Shaw, top 60 prospect, four-star, six-foot-eight wing. I was going to ask you, about him, and you mentioned him. I also think, you know, I was chuckling when you're naming the players, and, and this is not specific just to Mizzou. I don't like, I don't like the way, especially college basketball has has gone with the transfers. And I I understand like kids should be able to transfer. I understand COVID changed everything. You got an extra year, but don't you feel like 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 you cover Mizzou every day? And and the last couple of years, it seems like you have to introduce yourself to an entire new team every single year. And I I just think from a from a fan standpoint, you like to kind of see these teams grow together. Like when I first got here in 2008-ish, you had that team with Marcus Denman and Kim English, right, and, uh, you know, Flip Pressy and all those guys, and you saw them grow three, four years. And it's not just Mizzou. Now I'm watching college basketball, and I don't know any of these players and where they're from and who they're playing for now. Yeah, it's it's like almost like a huge celebration if a, if a player can go four years and and stay the whole time. I mean, Jeremiah Tillman did it, and I think he deserves a lot of credit. And like I'm, you know, not joking when I say that because you know that is it's crazy. Like that we're, you know, Jeremiah Tillman stuck it out, and and he and it was fun to get to know him and see the progression. That's that's how it should be. I think before Jeremiah Tillman, Ryan Rossberg, another St. Louis guy, mm-hmm. was the same way where we got to see his development, and and that was really cool to see. Um, not the case with uh, with this Mizzou basketball team, and it's not just a Mizzou problem. This is definitely nationally. But you know, I wish you know I, I I liked it a lot better back in the day. A little bit, I say back in the day. It's not like I'm I'm only 28 <laughs> years old. But you know, I've got relationship with with guys like Lawrence Bowers, guys that I covered mm-hmm. you know all their careers, um, and guys like Kim English, and and it's like those relationships you build. You know, as a journalist with a player, it's, those are those are fun to see. Versus when you have guys coming in and out, it is a little bit more difficult. But, uh, you know, 
guys like Javon Pickett, you know, he, he's, a, he's a guy that this year, this will be his fourth year. So, you know, he is a guy that I, I expect big things from. And I got to give him credit for, for staying around. And I know he's a guy that Conzo really likes. He plays really good defense, but we'll see how his offense progresses this year. Uh, so it's it's just the way it is these days, I guess, Charlie. <laughs> Finally, will you be making the trip to, uh, to Baston and, and eating some chowder while you cover that game? Uh, I wish I was. I wish I was. Uh, not in the cards this year, unfortunately. Um, I, I was really looking forward to hopefully getting, getting to Boston because I, I haven't been there since I was a kid, so uh, I think that would be a really cool place to go. But uh, Mizzou will get the opportunity, and uh, it'll be exciting to watch him 11 a.m. on Saturday. Awesome. Cannot wait. Andrew Kaufman, thanks for your time as always, sir. We'll talk to you next Thursday. Sounds good. Appreciate the time. All right. That's Andrew Kaufman, sports director at KMIZ-TV in Columbia, brought to you by International Tap House. That is ITAP. ITAP Delmar is now open, corner of Skinker and Delmar in the CVS building. They have college football and Sunday ticket there. Any ITAP location will have Mizzou games on. If they aren't on, just politely, Jim, politely ask the bartender, please, sir, or Perhaps please, you could change the channel for us. Please, milady, could you please Did turn you? on the Mizzou game at 11 a.m. on a Saturday while I drink my mimosa and eat my omelet here? Also, you got you got locations. Okay. Five of them. Soulard, Delmar, Columbia, Missouri, of course. That's the one that Andrew Kaufman goes to. KC, Crossroads, and also Louisville. And the new location there in Delmar that just opened, as I mentioned, they got trivia. It is every Wednesday at 7 o'clock at the International Tap House on Delmar. So how about that, Jim Heuer? Mizzou, I'm looking forward to this game. And that's why, okay, SEMO, weirdly, I was more excited about watching Tyler Macon and Brady Cook, because you knew they were going to destroy SEMO. It was a pick-your-score game, and the only reason, I was kidding, the only reason Mizzou didn't cover is because they got their starters out uh, a little too early. So, Eli, if you want to take care of your betters, I'm not saying you should, but maybe maybe if the spread is 34-and-a-half, maybe you make sure you get up to about a 49-zip lead before you look at the backups, but he's not concerned with that. No, he's not. He's concerned to keeping those guys healthy so they're ready to go this week against the Eagles of Boston College. It, look, if Tyler Beatty would have gotten hurt on, you know, point number 35 of the first half, <laughs> you know what that would have been like. Wouldn't it have been funny, though, if somebody <laughs> asked him that? If somebody said, uh, Eli, uh, third quarter there, you're up uh, 34 zip, and uh, Bazelak and Beatty were still in the game. What were you thinking, Coach? Well, we hadn't covered yet. What? Just be honest. Yeah, just tell us. <laughs> yeah, we didn't cover yet. I got some boosters that are really into that. They're big money, big ticket fee people, and we like to keep them happy. And so everybody knows I am joking. Yes, and you And you've got to get those guys out. And, again, I was very excited to watch Brady Cook. I was very excited to watch Tyler Macon. You knew they were going to destroy CMO, and they did. But seeing those young guys for the first time, not the first time, but really you know, this year, to see how they're progressing. Tyler Macon for the first time. That was fun to watch. Absolutely. Uh, look, that's what that is for. That that game is for that reason. It's to get reps for your second and third string guys. Get them a chance to play. Because the reality is, unless somebody gets hurt, they're not going to play. That's just the way that is. If if Connor Bazelak doesn't get hurt, and, and if he's not completely awful, those other guys aren't going to get a chance to play. And that's... Those games, as much as they're not great to watch for fans and pay the ticket prices and all that, that's to help build the depth in your program. So when those guys have to take over at some point, they're not shell shocked going, oh, I've never been in a game before. You know, and some of them might not have been in a game for two years. So that's what that's all about.